Welcome back to Excel Labs video 5 part 3. So I hope that in between uh, the, uh, the last part that you have closed all of the accounts. Just let's have a look through the accounts which we have not closed together. We can see that accounts receivable 8050 going towards that. Cash in hand, 800, balances out with 800. The cash in bank account balances out with 30,200 going towards the balance. So the balance is 40,000 for that account, so quite a large account. The inventories, 2,000 go towards the balance sheet don't forget you can always look these up in the solved and solution you can compare your solution against the actual solution and see if you were spot on or not if you made any mistakes now with the share capital nothing has changed so just click in there to be sure you still know what you're doing here. We have subtracted the smaller side from the larger side. And surprisingly, since nothing has happened, it's still 40,000. The retained profit from last year is still 3550. Nothing has changed there, but we will need that figure for our actual balance sheet later because, of course, we may have made a profit during January. So we need to take that into account as well later. The accounts payable, there's quite a large amount here, quite some line items here on the credit side. This is balanced out on the debit side, going against the balance sheet of 10,786. So this balances this account as well. For the long-term loan, we've taken up that loan in our transaction. This was, if you remember, transaction number six. And this goes against the balance sheet as long-term loan in bank cash in bank account. The expenses, the sales, cost of goods sold and profit and loss account we have closed together. So what do we do next? Basically one major step or two major steps are missing on the third sheet. So let's select that sheet. We need to actually show the profit and loss account for the 31st of January 2012 as well as the balance sheet. Now let's start with the profit and loss accounts. Note that these numbers are already there. So we refer to the numbers we've already calculated. We trigger this by using the equal sign. And now we're going to look for the sales. And now it's up to you if you want to take these sales from the sales account against the profit and loss account, or if you want to use them from the profit and loss account, I would say for the sake of real consistency, I'm taking them from the sales account because these counts against the profit and loss accounts. I'm taking the 20,000 from here. There they are. Cost of goods sold. for the cost of goods sold here they are 8,000 you can take them directly like this if you want as long as you subtract them right now in order to calculate the cross profit so the cross profit are the sales minus the cost of goods sold so careful not to add them up subtract one from the other so that's 12,000 cross profit Less the expenses, let's look up the expenses. Where are they in the expense account? Right here, five, six, seventy. One selected, press enter. Now we can calculate the operating profits by subtracting the expenses from the cross profit. So careful, it's cross profit minus expenses 
it's just the operating expenses of 6330 Now the net profit before tax, we have calculated the net profit before tax, I hope you remember. This is actually the operating profit. So you could do this in two ways, either you select this better here right away or you do the same calculation as earlier. Well, we did that calculation earlier. Just take this value right here, less tax. Now comes the acid test. This calculation should amount to the tax we have calculated right here. 1,266. So hopefully this will be the result because then we have done our job well. So we multiply this value times 20%. Now, if you type it in like that, please do not forget the percent sign. If you are feel comfortable or uncomfortable with that, you type 0 0.2. I like to type the percentage in because this then this really indicates that this was based on an interest or a tax. Therefore, hit enter, and there you go, 1,266. So we are quite spot on. Now, what is the retained profit therefore for January? It would be the net profit before tax minus the tax, 5,064. Now, this should look very familiar to you. Let's go back to the T accounts. Let's go all the way down to the profit and loss account. And there you go. That's the balance, 5,064. So well done. We add the retained profit. Well, retained means we have not spent it on anything yet. So let's look for the retained profit. I mentioned earlier that we might need this account again. Retained profit of 2011 against the balance sheet right here. Press enter. There we go. Therefore, the retained profit by the end of January plus the retained profit by the end of 2011 equals 8,614. So there you go. Now one more thing we need to go for. The balance sheet. This is our last bit. Now this balance sheet already contains the new accounts. So be very careful if you are required to create those accounts from scratch. Do not just copy this balance sheet. Check if there are any new accounts such as inventories such as long-term loan. Now let's close these accounts. This is basically just we need to look for our closing balances. For the license, go back to the T accounts, look for the license account, it's right over here, and the balance of 15,000. Our vehicle pans out with 5,500, so balance. As you can see, this is basically just looking at the numbers you've uh, calculated earlier. So when you arrived at this stage, it is not that difficult anymore. You did the majority of the hard work already. So let's look for the fittings account. Not much has happened here. It's stays on the 2850 so the total value of fixed assets well, let's use the auto sum check if it's the correct range let's enter 23350 pounds so the same thing with the current assets 
current assets consist of the inventories and new accounts. Let's go all the way down to the inventories. The closing balance of the inventories was 2000. The accounts receivable are right here. So be always careful, very, be very diligent that you are in the right account, the right line item. 8050. The cash in hand. Eight hundred. The cash and bank accounts with thirty thousand two hundred. There we go. The next total value. Check it's the right range. It is forty-one thousand fifty. And now we can already add up the total value of fixed assets and the total value of the current assets. We can see that 64,400. Well, we can check if we've done everything right because it needs to be the same amount right here. So let's check if that is actually the case. The share capital has not changed. Let's check. Earlier capital accounts in blue, forty thousand. The retained profit for January two thousand and twelve. Careful that you now select the right one. Is this one? This amount we just calculated. Do not pick the one going against the profit and loss account from earlier. It does not go against the balance sheet. Enter. Eight thousand six hundred and fourteen. The total capital, all sum, forty-eight thousand six hundred and fourteen. Accounts payable. Check back. Accounts payable. Right here, ten thousand seven hundred and eighty six. Ah, there's a bank loan. It's a new account, so don't forget this new account. Five thousand. So the total liabilities are, the auto sum is really practical here because we have gaps between the components. So we take the accounts payable plus the bank loan. And now we're hoping that these add up to the 64,400 total capital plus total liabilities. There you go. Now, if you have reached that stage, that you both values show 64,400, then this is correct. So if you, have, if you have achieved these numbers, congratulations, very well done. If you have not, try to recreate where you've gone off, where you've, where you've gone wrong with this and can rewind all the videos, stop, pause at any moment and compare what I'm demonstrating and what you're doing.